Pecha Kucha 22, Artist Documentaries in Neo. So, it, research is a strange thing on my course. Uh, they're always telling us to do it, and I always reluctantly do it, but this week I actually, you know, a, a friend recommended I look at some stuff, and I did. I found it very informative and interesting. Uh, but before that, Neo. So, I finished this. It's uh, set in feudal Japan, medieval Japan. Uh, it takes place during a massive, famous uh, period of civil war, uh, right before the unification of Japan under the Tokugawa shogunate for the, the next 400 years. Uh, something about the game that I really like are the animatics. Uh, a lot of characters, their motivations and, and history is explained through these, these not that complicated things. Like Hideyoshi Toyotomi is a massive historical figure, but he's not in the game. So him being silhouetted in the cutscene, uh, both in terms of simplicity uh, and visual appeal works quite well. I'd like to do stuff like that. So here are some of the famous people. Tokugawa Ieyasu, Unifier of Japan, top left. Minishige Tachibana, undefeated in the West, bottom left. Hanzo Hattori, you've heard the name if you've not seen the face. Ninja. Uh, Nagamasa Kuroda, son of famous tactician Kanbei Kuroda. Uh, the, another reason I really like the game is... It's excellent reference material for, for this period of, of history. Um, I don't know if I have anything that's this good that wouldn't be photographic reference from the internet. I can use this doing my own stuff going forward. Animatics are something that I've come across in Dante's Inferno as I was watching a Let's Play. Um, it's a fake Devil May Cry slash God of War thing um, based on the famous... Oh, I don't know what the the, the poem the, the Iliad. I don't know that might be something else. Something the game does that sets it apart from all the gore, with all the gore and stuff it does is it actually has a nudity comes up quite frequently. It's a game that tries to earn its eighteen rating not by being vulgar but by trying to be mature. Nudity always comes across as more surprising than the mountain of corpses you tend to come across in these games uh you know the religious overtones are quite uh prevalent satan surprise surprise is the last boss who else when you're going through the seven or eight circles of hell uh you know playing with that kind of standing mythology is something a lot of people do castlevania the reboot did the same thing. Uh, you were a holy warrior in the first one who becomes Dracula, who's then targeted by holy, holy warriors, and they're trying to pray to their crosses to stop him, and he starts praying to the cross as well. Uh, good stuff. Doesn't work. Uh, Preacher is another example of, of a comic book series I highly recommend, which religion and religious under slash overtones are kind of right at the heart. You know, Catholicism again, because this is the one you can satirize, because, you know, this is the West. Uh, I think I would like to do something like that, but not anytime soon. So documentaries, Frank Quietly. Uh, these little 20-minute shows talked about a variety of artists. Frank Quietly, comic book artist, kind of a big deal. Uh, works from a studio in Glasgow, um, and it seems a bit grim and austere. Works all day, sleeps in a sleeping bag in the studio sometimes. Uh, John Byrne, Scottish portrait artist, also uh, has written some very famous, popular kind of screenplays slash TV shows. Uh, very much uh, an artist. He just, but he has a workmanship mentality, not that different from Frank Quietly. Uh, Tracy Emin, a uh, modern artist, she represents something I don't really understand. Modern art to me is is noise for the sake of being noisy. It's It seems to have no correlation with talent, both in, in what the artists do and how it's received. Uh, Norman Aykroyd uh, etches, etches landscapes of, of like the British Isles. Uh, um, interesting fellow, has a very kind of strong basis in a mechanical process, which is what they'd love on our course, but you know, it's it's something I couldn't do because he's got a, he lives basically in a warehouse. Uh, Jack Vetriano, a Scottish fellow, apparently one of the most popular British portraitists, well not portraitists, what well, painters, uh, does a lot of populist stuff so he doesn't get any traction with the modern art world. Um, it's It's a convoluted thing. 
and really more questions are asked than answers given. Yinka Shonobare, I thought I'd seen all of these, but there's there's a ton of them I haven't. Does very interesting things, looking at sort of British Empire textiles pattern. Um, brought up on my, on my university course, it's nice when the two worlds collide and it seems organic instead of forced. Um, a different documentary, a much longer one, 40 minutes long, on Hjalf Svane, a Dutch painter who paints hyper-realistic port paintings of th strange things like sandwiches, uh, eggs, vases. Um, while what he does seems silly, I feel I can give it more credit than some of the other stuff because there's definitely talent. Something that came in the making of the doc documentaries is in the first minute of his... He had more human interaction than all of the other documentaries I saw combined. I think it's just the nature of how they were edited, but all of the other documentaries made it seem like a very lonely, depressing kind of thing to be an artist. Uh, yeah, so hyper-realistic painting. Is, is it what makes someone go to a gallery and look at this and, and, and have a straight face? I I don't know. Uh, I I think it's saying something about society, you know, if you if you can be bothered to look. But at least he went and painted that egg, and he did a good job of it. So uh, you know, it's it's silly, but it's not as silly as it could be. So what do I need to do? I need to grip my teeth, show some spine, and get on with it. All the stuff I have to do, I need to do it now. And of course, the university mantra in full quotation marks. Don't forget to have fun. Sigh. But yeah, adding a soundtrack to when I'm working on the computer seems... It's not something I usually do, but I think I should, because it really... The energy of the stuff I listen to can permeate into the work I do, so I think that might be able to carry the day for me. So we'll we'll, we'll give it a try if I can tear myself away from all the, the, the wonderful things I'm doing that aren't really helping me in the long term. That brings us to the end of Pitch Kucha 22. I will see you next time.